Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pole style pinata for your next party. And this is kind of fun because I've shown you how to do pinatas in the past, but this is the first time I'm going to show you how to do a pole kind, which is really great if you have younger kids that you don't want swinging sticks around, or you just want an easier way to kind of get the candy out. This video is brought to you by Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com, and we'll be using some tissue paper, tool, and ribbon from them. I'm using an old box as the base of my pinata. So I started off by tracing a big plant pot on one piece, and that's the uh, bottom of the jellyfish pinata here. And then I cut some slits, uh, kind of like pie slices in the middle. And that's gonna be the place where we're gonna pull the false bottom through. And that's what this smaller disc represents here. Doesn't have to be perfect. You just need something that's gonna be able to pull through those uh, slits when the pinata is ready to be opened. And then what I did was I traced that first circle onto another piece of cardboard and cut out another circle about four inches larger than it on each side. And then I simply um, cut little wedge pieces out all the way around so that when I formed my dome, I would be able to round it out. And you'll see how I assemble that in just a second. The next thing you do after you cut those little wedge shaped slits out is you need to bend the cardboard so that it will form easily. So basically take a wedge and just bend it with your hands so that it rounds out and the circle becomes a dome. You wanna do that for every triangle piece that you have. And you can see it comes to a really nice rounded dome shape. Now you're gonna tear off small pieces of tape and I'm using duct tape because this is a pole style pinata so I don't have to worry about it being too strong for kids to break apart. And you're gonna secure each of these little triangle pieces to the jellyfish bottom. That was that, um, that round piece that we cut slits into that we'll be able to pull the floor out of. So what I like to do is do one of the triangle pieces, then go on the opposite side, secure that down and so on and so forth. So I would kind of do those two sides Then, if you're thinking of a compass I would do the, the east and the west and then I would do the north and the south and then I would tack down each of the middle pieces until I have every piece secured. Then you want to tear longer pieces of duct tape and attach the dome completely to the bottom and you can stick your hand inside of the box so that you can push against it so that you'll get a really good bond between the tape and the cardboard. So go ahead and do that all the way around until that seam is completely sealed down. Make sure you poke a hole in the top of the pinata so you'll have a place to feed a ribbon through for hanging later. While you're at it, you can poke a hole in that smaller disc of cardboard that we cut that's going to be able to be pulled through the floor of the pinata. That'll need a hole in it too so that we can attach some tool or ribbon to it at a later time. I also wanted to mention that I use duct tape to seal up the seams on the top of the jellyfish pinata dome area as well as securing the dome to the bottom. So you can see that there in that picture. Now what we're gonna do is take some tissue paper and cover the top of our jellyfish. You wanna apply hot glue around the perimeter of your um, box there on the bottom. And again, using opposite sides, you're gonna stick the tissue paper down. Only put glue around the perimeter though. You don't wanna glue down those um, flaps in the middle cause you're gonna to need to be able to get in and out of that for filling with candy and also for replacing in our false bottom. Be careful when you're working with hot glue with the tissue paper cause tissue paper is very thin and I don't want you to burn your hands. You're gonna do one more sheet of tissue paper just kind of offset it a little bit just to make sure every bit of the cardboard is covered. Now we're going to do the same exact thing but with some deco mesh and I'm using a beautiful teal deco mesh that's got glitter in it so it's just perfect for an under the sea party and a jellyfish. So I'm going to cut two pieces just like the tissue paper and I am going to put one going one way and then other piece is going to be offset is going to be perpendicular to that piece so that way there's no weird edges hanging off the edge and we get that nice fluffy domed jellyfish look. Here's where the project gets a little tricky though. It's very difficult to hot glue deco mesh because it is a plastic and also it's very porous and very holy. So uh, it's very easy to burn yourself if you're not careful. So what I found was taking clothespins and clipping the mesh in place, then I could squirt glue on top of the mesh and it would ooze down into the other layers, keeping my hands from getting burned and giving me a really nice finished look. You can also use silicone spatulas from the kitchen to hold places down while the glue is drying. 
While the glue is cooling, I decided to work on the false bottom. So I took three strips of deco mesh that I had cut. I cut a bunch of them into three inch wide strips to use as decorations and I'm twisting the ends together and then I am tightly wrapping it with a piece of cello tape. That way I can kind of uh, use that to thread my deco mesh through the little hole that I poked on the piece of cardboard that's gonna be the false bottom. Then I cut through at an angle so I had a nice sharp kind of needly end that I could stick through. Now, now instead of poking it through and trying to tie it, I had a better idea. I simply pushed through the deco mesh and then secured it down with some duct tape and really that's all you need to make the false bottom. I used the same technique on the ribbons for the top of the pinata. I took about a two foot long piece of ribbon and taped the ends together to kind of make a needle. Then I pushed that through the hole I previously poked in the top of the pinata. That way I could have a hanging loop. Then I just had to tie it from the inside to keep it secure. You can tie it around something if you want to, like a clothespin or something so that it won't pull through very easily when it's hanging outside. And there you can see the neat tidy loop up top and then we can insert the false bottom in the underside of the pinata. So all you have to do is simply pull back your uh, deco mesh and find the hole and slide in that disc. And it looks really neat when it's all done. It's hard to believe how tidy it can look. Now, if you have any loose bits, don't worry. It's going to be camouflaged when we go ahead and add our other tendrils to the outside of the pinata. Just take your time fussing that in place. And then um, you can push and tuck in any loose pieces of deco mesh as you go. Now the last thing we need to do is add some more tendrils for our jellyfish. So when I cut those strips for the uh, false bottom, I also cut a bunch more to use here. So what you want to do is glue down your strips of deco mesh with the raw edges facing in. That way when the tendrils hang down, they'll cover up any of the rough edges. I alternated pink, lime green, and turquoise all the way around. And I think that looked really pretty and it matches everything else that we've done here with the jellyfish pinata and also the invitations that we made last week. So now the pinata is done, I took it outside and used an S hook to hook it to the uh, string I keep on this tree because it's our pinata tree. And I think it is really cute and the gentle breeze will move the jellyfish and give it a really realistic movement, which is why I thought deco mesh would be perfect for this project. Now, when you want to fill your pinata, all you have to do is reach in there. You can either push the false bottom out of the way and dump the candy in and shake it to the, uh, to the top, or you can pull that false bottom out, fill it with candy and replace it. I think it's probably Probably just as easy to push the false bottom in further, dump the candy and shake it to disperse it and then you're good to go. This pinata could be hit with a stick if you don't want to do the pull bottom. Um, the duct tape might make it a little difficult to break apart so if you think you may want to use a stick you may want to use masking tape or something that's a little less robust but either way the kids are going to have a ball playing with it. I want to thank you so much for watching today and if you want to find the tissue paper or tool I used you can find it at our sponsor Paper Mart. You can check them out online at www.papermart.com packaging for less. Thanks for watching until next time. Happy crafting.